Hello. Welcome. So for this drawing, I am redoing a drawing that I did previously, mainly because the original drawing, it was cool, but I feel like I could um, fix it up and make it a lot nicer. And so I am going in and doing that. And I'm also just paying attention more to the style of illustration. Fast speed illustration. So I'll just be talking through the illustration and just my thoughts about it and hopefully this can relax you. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little hard to talk um, while I'm drawing just because my mind just wants to concentrate on what I'm doing and so there are sometimes when I am drawing I have a hard time just you know continuing to talk there's a lot of times where there's a lot of pauses in my conversation to myself <laughs> and those pauses just happen because I'm thinking you know but um, anyway so I just wanted to give you guys some context for this so for this illustration I had done a previous illustration um, and I was basically following a diary entry and I have no idea who created this diary entry, by the way. It's just like random. But one of my coworkers slash friends set this whole thing up, and she's awesome. She's amazing. Um, where she has she posts. Okay, it's kind of hard to. I'm like drawing as I as I do this, so bear with me. So she set up this Instagram profile where you can send in your diary entries um, and it could be about anything, you know, it could be about a trip that you took recently or, you know, um, how you're feeling or what you did that day and then um, she organizes all of those, um, all of those entries and then it's all anonymous, so if you feel like, oh, I don't want to put my name down, you know, you don't have to. If you want people to know your name, you're more than welcome to put your name down and, you know, where to find you on social media and all that. Um, so anyways, um, I, I told my friend that I was, that I was interested in, in illustrating for one of her diary entries, you know, for whatever, whomever you know, she receives diary entries from and she was like, okay, that sounds good and so the diary entry that I received let me read it out loud to you so it says today Alex and I worked from home and made mussels for dinner I'm full of wine, butter, and happiness heart emoji I can't wait to marry this man Okay, so initially um, what I had, I guess my thought process was, okay, I don't want any, want, I don't really want to draw muscles because muscles are kind of hard and I feel like not that many people will get the sense that I'm drawing muscles. <laughs> so what I ended up doing is focusing more on the wine. Um, so let me just read it, read it again for you. It says, Today, Alex and I worked from home and made mussels for dinner. I'm full of wine, butter, and happiness. I can't wait to marry this man. So, I focused on the wine part and, um, just the happiness, like, almost celebration aspect of it. Um, I know she didn't mention any celebration of it, but I thought, 
you know, it's a happy feeling, it's a happy moment, so why not celebrate it? So, in my initial drawing, I drew a hand holding a wine glass. Um, and the wine glass was filled with different layers of colors, with um, rings at the bottom of it, because she mentioned that she wanted to marry, like, she couldn't wait to marry him, you know, so that, um, that symbolizes marriage, the rings. And then I put a bunch of, like, random hearts and flowers on top of the wine glass, and in theory, it sounded cool. And, you know, it came out fine. But I think I can definitely revise it and just make it a more appealing because it, it, you know, when you think, when you look at it, it almost looks a bit random with, you know, a wine glass with, you know, it, it, yeah, I don't know. I just felt like it was a bit random and I wanted to um, hone in on the message or at least select a more... You know, if I'm going to go with celebration, then I should, the theme of celebration, then I should at least, um, just go all in, right? And so, my friend, um, and I actually, okay, so I finished that drawing, like, pretty quickly because I just happened to have time at that moment. Um, but, um, yeah, looking back, I'm like, oh yeah, I can, um, hone in on just, like, the art style you know, not just the objects in the image. Um, and so that's what I'm doing with this particular drawing is I'm taking some of the elements that I did like and taking out some of the elements that I didn't like and then also just refining the drawing just because um, I feel like I tend to follow the same sort of um, way that I do art and that is basically just... Um, you know, doing a rough sketch and then adding in the colors, solid colors, and then adding in the shades, like, you know, texture to that solid color. And that's cool, um, but I feel like I want to try different art styles and challenge myself. And so that is why I am redoing it completely and starting from scratch and doing a completely new drawing. <laughs> so. That is the reason, um, and yeah, it, you know, just in general, I feel like this, when you redo drawings and, and come back to something old that you did, you realize that you can definitely make it a lot better, because the first time or the first try that you do something, it may not necessarily come out perfect, and that's okay, you know, the willingness to just try to get better is so important and that is what matters a lot of the times because when you look at version 1 compared to version 5 or 6 or 7 or whatever, right, like you see so much improvement and that's what all of this is about is just getting better, getting better at drawing, getting better at um, you know, being creative, and I know that sounds weird, but the more you practice thinking, um, creatively and just, like, getting these projects, it will only help your art. So, my advice, um, or just suggestion, <laughs> is to always just come back to your old drawings and see how, if you can make it better, um, and, you know, do it. Um, go for it, try to see what you can improve or what you've learned throughout the years and especially if the drawing itself is years old then you can, you know, once you do version 2, version 3 or whatever you will see significant progress in your art and that's, that's amazing, you want to get better, right? Hopefully <laughs> So, yeah, I, I really enjoy drawing and uh, my friend, the one that is coordinating all of this and this is her um, fun project that she started, she, is, she herself is an illustrator and I work with her. <laughs> she is 
super, super talented. And in my day job, um, I do illustrate, you know, but she's, um, but my, but she's, she's the main illustrator, right? Like, not, not necessarily for the things that I do, because we are separated by product areas, but I look at her work and she's like, she's really good. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I need tips from her. So, um, yeah, um, she has given me really, really good tips in the past and, um, yeah, I, I hope this second version, um, comes out a lot better. I'm super excited to see the results. Um, but also know, like, okay, let me take my time, let me think this through. Don't rush through anything. Um, think through the elements, you know, how can I make this, um, look nicer and cleaner, <laughs> um, more appealing. I, I do want to get into drawing characters, um, I have in the past, but, um, I feel like I want to just practice all my character skills a lot more. Um, also, I totally didn't, um, I didn't mention what I do on my day job. I do draw, um, but, um, I, that's, that's not like, you know, all that I do, and that's not the main thing that I do. The main thing that I do at my job is I animate, uh, so that is why my art skills, or I guess my illustration skills are a little less, um, good. <laughs> for, you know, a lack of words. But, um, yeah, just it's getting all this color in here. I am really digging this new, um, look. So for this, I'm, you know, I wanted to focus on the wine bottle and on the celebration part, like I mentioned. And, and, um, I think this really hones in on that because, as you can tell, the, the wine bottle is now the main focus of the illustration. As it's in the center and all of that. So... One of the hardest things, <laughs> and I'm sure it is for other people as well, is that sometimes it's really tough for me to, um, to select my color palette. And a good, um, thing that I've found is just to go online and to just use a color palette that you see online. And at first I was like, wait, that's cheating. But you know what? It works. So it's not really cheating because a lot of the times people put the color palette that they like um, online and they want you to use, you know, their color palette or whatever. And there's some people that like, that's what they do, right? That's what they do a lot is just create a bunch of color palettes that, you know, select colors that go together and then post them online. So, yeah, pretty cool. And um, I use that all the time. <laughs> um, yeah. For a lot of my drawings, um, because I have a full-time job and all that, I, I tend to 
to do them in like not not batches or anything just like you know I'll start on this drawing and then I won't finish it until like two days from now mainly because you know I'll start on it and then have to go make dinner um, or I'll have to go make something life happens and so yeah it, it you know that just that's just the reason why I don't necessarily finish and start my illustrations all in one day I'm always amazed at um, artists that are just naturally talented. Um, when I was younger, I I loved to draw, but I didn't necessarily get a lot of guidance, um, and that's okay, you know. There's different methods of being guided into art, or I guess. you know, just getting feedback that will ultimately make you a better artist. So, if you're in that stage where you want feedback, but you don't know where to ask, people have told me that, you know, online you can post your art and ask for feedback and stuff like that. I personally don't know any forums or, uh, sites in particular that do that so if you happen to know <laughs> I'd be super interested in that because yeah I mean it, it's always great to have your art be you know critiqued in a good way you know because then that just shows you the things that you wouldn't normally realize that you know, you might be doing wrong or, you know, there might be like an easier way to do certain things. Um, yeah. For me, um, I went to art school in California, in San Francisco. Um, and that's where I got a lot of feedback from my teachers and my peers. But after college, you know, you kind of lose that sense of, um, posit you know, just like critique, people critiquing your work. Just because at work, you do get your stuff critiqued, but it's like on a different level. It's on what makes the point of the illustration, you know, like just the messaging of it. it that's where the critique lies from rather than actual like art critique it's more of just like oh you know what we changed the the vibe of the whole you know event that's coming up you know if you're doing an illustration for an event i'm just making an example here <laughs> but um yeah so you kind of lose the individual feedback of how to make your art better and to me I, i've realized that that is so important um so 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 important <laughs> um and i i value and i appreciate when people give me feedback on my work even if it's something that i don't necessarily want to hear you know like no one wants to hear hey your art is not great like <laughs> not that they're gonna say that or anything but you know um just yeah, as an artist, we always have to be mindful and, and what is that called? Just like, um, aware that people are gonna critique or judge your work. I'm almost finished here. Okay, so I just wanted to say um, thank you for sticking around and stuff and hearing me out while I ramble on and on and on. <laughs> Anyways, it was amazing having you here and I hope to see you next time on my next video. Alright, bye guys. Take care.